Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and in this episode of From Behind the Barbecue Front Lines, I get a chance to talk to Todd David from Cadillac Barbecue in Dallas, Texas. This one is really great because Todd is really savvy, very methodical, and deliberate about how he does stuff. And I noticed that it didn't look like they shut down at all. So I wanted to talk to him and see how they're doing, what's going on, and it's a very informative interview. It's really a good one. Currently, they're still open Thursday and Friday from 10.30 to sold out, and the first Saturday of every month from 10.30 till sold out. The line moves extremely quick, he said. People start not lining up around the 9.30 range. Pre-orders are picked up at 9.45. If those orders are all picked up by 10, even though they're open at 10.30, he'll start letting people in. they let people in one at a time. Like he said, it's about a 30-minute wait at the most, and he gives the ideal time to come. So that's a kind of a cool little thing in this interview. Also, he does recommend that you sign up. I'll have a link below to the email that they send out weekly with specials and different information about ordering. That's really important. One cool thing that I did learn is that they have whole hog every day now. Pull, they pull it, they chop it. That's a really cool option. If you've never had whole hog, that is killer. But we go deeply into the changes, the safety changes that they've made. They've always been a clean and safe restaurant, but this is... A different time and so he talks in detail about what they've done they modified how safety is key to the employees as well as to the customers and in the end he talks about in his mind he wants to keep things simple he's a barbecue shack at the end of the day even though it's not a barbecue shack that's the way he envisions it he wants to keep it a simple no-brainer meat market style you can still come and order in and eat in but it's all separated all spaced out or you could take food to go he said a majority of the food is taken to go so the options are pre-order ahead grab it go in get it to go or eat in i can't thank todd enough for taking the time for doing the things he does and just for being so honest about everything in his business it's it's a really really informative great interview and the kevin's barbecue joints podcast and youtube show is brought to you by treaty oak distilling that's treatyoakdistilling.com or you can go to the location in dripping springs 26 acres. I think it's open six days a week. They have a barbecue joint, Ellis's, that does live fire as well on location. You can try all their different bourbon, gin and rum there, as well as cocktails, beer, wine, everything. Beautiful spot. Again, it's treatyoakdistilling.com. I have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com. Check it out. Tons of content, all the podcasts, all the YouTube stuff, as well as additional stories, breaking news, information list if you're digging these please subscribe hit the subscribe button this is on the youtube side subscribe i guess you can subscribe on the podcast side but uh youtube subscribe that way you don't miss out doing two to three of these per week i'm on the social media at kevin's bbq joints but at the end stay safe i hope you're enjoying these take care i just wanted to kind of check in and see where you're at and you know how you're doing i'm doing good how are yeah? you doing <laughs> I'm doing good as well. I'm doing doing all right. LA is a little little odd right now. It's uh, I'm not sure what where we are right now in the midst of this. I don't know where if anybody knows where they are right now. Texas <laughs> is a little bit in trouble, um, just yeah. like Florida, California. I think it's you know all the big cities are. This is just new to everybody, and and a lot of people don't want to follow the suggestions that we get. And yeah. so we deal with the consequence. It, it's not going to go anywhere. It's just how well can it get managed, I think. I agree. One of those things. So we've had flus, all different types. When I was a kid, we were vaccinated for, the, I think, the swine flu. Mm. I think when I was in college, maybe. They lined us up and shot us in the arm with a machine. Oh, a machine, really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because there were many people. They didn't dare give everybody a syringe. They wouldn't have enough syringes. So it was a air-powered, sil- I remember it was silver. It's a long time ago for me, but it was a silver machine. And, and you walked through this line, and we filled out some paperwork, and shot you in the arm, and away you went, back to class. Uh, is that the one? If that's not the one. Do you have a scar from that, like a circular no. scar? Okay. No, that was right before... Um, that was kids had that some my generation some right before I was born type stuff I can't remember what that was for I think that had to do more with 
polio. I think so. I think you might be right. I was just, just thinking that same thing. I know that there's people and you're not a whole lot older than I am. And I think that it's a generation right before you, you that had that. I think there's polio and, and one other that they were vaccinated for. I, think. I don't remember. I know polio was, at least they had a vaccine for it when I was born mm -hmm. and my siblings were born. And I just remember the, the, the swine flu thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I know my mom talks about polio and how they had to drain the pools. They had to do a lot of very similar things to keep people from congregating. And if yep. you look back at like the, the Spanish flu, I've seen some different write-ups and it's very similar, like keep distance, make sure you wear face coverings. It, it's all kind of <laughs> the same, different, know, but the same. And, and we do a lot of the same stuff during regular flu season. Everybody mm -hmm. washes their hands a little more. Mm -hmm. You stay away from people. We have a sneeze guard up, so on and so on. You know, this is just more advanced. Mm -hmm. And I think flu season will go a whole lot better because of it. Oh, for sure. You know, that's a good point. That's a very good point. I'm sure a lot of people will get the flu vaccine, even uh, the flu shot, because they sure. uh, they won't be <laughs> – they won't be as reticent to it. Same with the common cold and stuff like that. You know, it's some of the practices are good practices, but it's just that it's out of hand a little bit of how to get it under control. So we don't have to deal with the practice. So, but it, everything's good. We, we've dealt with it from day one in the business. Did you shut down at all? We never shut down. We modified all kinds of things. Okay. Uh, we tried to help people out with some different giveaways that when, when we knew people were going unemployed very quickly, we tried to help in that situation a little bit. And we never had to shut down. Uh, I told my staff when we first started talking about it in March that I would do a couple things. One, my goal was to keep them safe. Uh, two, my goal was to keep them employed. And if we could do those two things, then we would continue on our adventure of letting people enjoy barbecue. Mm -hmm. So we've been able to do all three things. And each week we get different news of how to do it a little differently. So I have to listen to uh, some of these cool people here and because they change their mind very regularly. Very regularly. A lot more than I even realized they would. Yeah, and so we pretty much, we, we've put safety in place first, and we've stuck by that real high, and it seems to be working. You can't get in this building without a mask. Okay. <laughs> I, have, I have a bunch of them. <laughs> yeah, you can't get in here without one. Okay. And you can't uh, get in here without that. I mean, we have a person at the door that lets them in one at a time okay and doesn't touch the door he waves the people in and then we've got a spot where they stand and there's big stickers on the floor just like walmart and stuff like that <laughs> and it's a routine and it's working that if they want to get food they're still able to get food and so you know we're here to try to help them through that and we know people at the very beginning, they had limited choices of where to go get food. Oh, for sure. Because a lot of restaurants were closed that have now reopened. And a lot of sources to get food, like a grocery store, was out of food. Oh, it's crazy. And so they were buying, and, and there's nothing better to take home for takeout than barbecue. I, I, I mean, barbecue agree started more. as a takeout food, right? Mm -hmm. You know, m many barbecue places even older ones that uh, are well known for their history. Uh, Daniel Vaughn wrote an article this past weekend about uh, Meshacks here in Dallas. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those kind of places that are great started in takeout. It's so very true. takeout worked just perfect for barbecue. If we, if we had a good sign, that was kind of it, you know, was that, okay, we were in the right. If you're going to be in the restaurant business during all this, I don't think you could ask for anything better than barbecue. No, barbecue was the best suited restaurant across the United States. It seems yeah. some, some of them closed down because of how they were operating and how they had uh, a lot of indoor seating and like that business model. That you got to put safety first. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Spacing outside the building. Has that become an, 
have you how have you set that up has that changed so we changed we put everybody outside to wait instead of inside mm -hmm. once we opened to the public where they could sit down inside again mm -hmm. with limited amount of spaces it was it's a lot better for them with everybody outside nobody likes everybody standing over your table <laughs> no, I... and, and it works well for the customers we put them on one side of the building instead of in front of the building and we added some uh, awnings, portable awnings and we added some music and things of that sort so we're trying to accommodate the best we can we don't have as many get in line and but they're getting more obviously more food because they all have the thought in mind of okay let's have something for at the house mm -hmm. and so you know that's a plus i guess your average sale goes up and we had to change a little bit how we box things how we package stuff a sauce that was on the table is gone there's mm -hmm. no sauce containers we don't want anybody touching that so so the sauce goes into a little container to go with them whether they're eating here or taking it to go that makes sense and our pre-orders which we always did pre-orders where you could call in call in or go online i guess is how we do it uh, i don't handle too much of that but they go online they place their order yeah i saw it's a pretty simple a, concept yeah well, it's a real simple concept and that increased okay more people want to take advantage of that and so we increase the the time on it. You used to have to wait two weeks. You had to do it two weeks in advance. Mm -hmm. Now you have to do it at Tuesday. It shuts off on Tuesday for the current week. Okay. So we we just have to react a lot quicker to when those orders come in and make sure we have enough briskets and everything that we need. So it was just some slight modifications. Mm -hmm. So people can order that way and they can still order takeout and they can still order to dine in. And so now for so, when you order online, is there a separate area you go to for those pickups? Is that? No, they, well, yes and no. Um, we just form a separate line outside. Gotcha. So okay. everybody that's not doing that comes from one direction and we don't let them in until everybody from the other direction, which are the pre-orders come in and have done their thing. Those and are those satisfied. People come in one at a time Okay. And, and their stuff is all ready. And it's just a matter of, uh, their, their credit card and all that and there's a a large portion of our customers that are just big on they're used to that butcher style that we have of come go through the line see what we have see what you want see how much you want and we don't want to take that away from them i could easily do you know where you drive up we throw it in your trunk and you drive yeah, away. yeah and there's plenty of places that do that and they do it very very well but i just have a lot of folks that come in here that are coming here because they want to see what's going on they want to get away they want to smell it and see it and pick it you know they're like oh, i don't want that end rib can i have a middle rib and and could i have some more slices of brisket and whatever it is you know all those they see the size of sausage and it's like no i don't need a pound i just need one of those or or one's not enough, let me have two. Whatever it is, we seem to help them by showing them what they're getting to go. That's a sense of normalcy that you're adding to their lives. I we think. try to, we yeah. try to. We always had a glass screen in front of us where a shield and I can talk over it, but we're not spreading anything. We're six feet away. We did move that back slightly by putting a, a um, a rail across okay. so that we know that we're safe and the customers are safe. Mm -hmm. And again, there, you can't move from station one to station two until we say go, we'll, we'll yank them back and go, hold on one second, please. And, and, mm -hmm. and wait till that person goes around the corner to the cashier and everybody's spaced really well. And, and they flow with it really well. And so we, we've had no issues with really anything from the customers. They're, they're grateful that we're open and that we'll, we'll cook for them and they can come here and get something to really enjoy. And, they're, so and you're still open on the Saturdays, right? Right. Uh, we, we, we just finished our first Saturday, which was July 4th. That's since awesome. we went back to Saturdays. 
and and it went well. More people actually came on Friday than on Saturday because I guess they had plans for yeah. for Saturday. We still sold out, but nothing like we did on the third. And we didn't expect the third to be as busy as it was. We thought everybody would come on the fourth. But that's this business. You, there's <laughs> no predicting. Thursday was as busy as Friday was. So I can't explain any of that. Uh, I'm grateful for it. Mm-hmm. And the people are grateful to get the food and everybody got pretty much what they wanted and, and, and they wait in line. It's hot outside. It's, I don't know, it's probably close to a hundred degrees with the heat factor here. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Those days. And they wait and uh, we move that line as quick as we possibly, we always have. We've mm-hmm. always been very cognizant of people waiting in line. I hate to wait in line and I don't want anybody else to wait in line, but I, can't help and I'm glad that hundreds of people come here to eat barbecue. I don't know how long that will continue. Places are open every time you turn around. So, um, you know, we're, we're grateful to have what we have to do. Don't you do whole hog sometimes? Or is that, that, that We do whole hog now every day that we open. Okay. So we did three hogs last week. Wow. <laughs> and it's, there's none here. A hundred percent of it left. And I enjoy doing the hog. It's, mm-hmm. it's a good thing. And people are, are just starting to uh, really get into it. We've been doing it for a while now, but we just keep increasing. The, we can't increase the frequency anymore now because we do it every day. The only thing we can do now is do more hogs. Mm-hmm. And we, we, I don't see that happening shortly, but um, I look forward to putting more hogs on that. Smoke. Are you we teaching people hogs. how to order that too? That's a, because there's specific ways to order a whole hog that is not familiar for even I'm from California, but for Texans too. It, it's they're not familiar with it. They're familiar with beef. Yes. And, and so they're it's pork steaks. We went through the same thing and I grew up on pork steaks. It was the first item I cooked as a kid was a pork steak. Oh. A little different than we do now, but that was in St. Louis and, and pork steaks were really, and still are big up in, mm-hmm. in that area. Yeah. Pork's a little bit different, but people have heard of pulled pork. They know what pulled yes, pork is. I'd hope so. Yes. Uh, that's a good step. Dog. And, but when you say whole hog, we, yes, we do have to explain a lot of times what that is. Uh, before the virus, we could at least give them a sample. Oh, yeah. Now we, you know, nobody wants to touch anything, so we don't do that. And, uh, but we show them, and once they've had it once, um, they pretty much come back for more. And we've gotten better at it, I hope. You know, I would we, think so, especially yeah, you. We, You're yeah, very so methodical about, about it. Crackling, uh, when, we, when they ask for a pork sandwich, we, we put slaw on it if they want. That's mm-hmm. kind of our style. And we put cracklings on it if they want. And uh, sometimes they don't know what cracklings are and we explain it and show it to them. Mm-hmm. And for the sandwich, we do cracklings that are more chopped up like you would put in the pork. Uh, but we've done some experimenting with it and, and cracklings don't travel well. Hmm. And if you have some moisture in there, which we hope the pork does and so on, they won't be as crisp down the road as they will that makes here. Sense. So when they get a sandwich here, We'll put the slaw on it. We'll put the cracklings on it. If it's to go, we'll do it on the side and, and whatever they want. But that, that they are, they're learning about that, that they see those cracklings as they're coming through. And we have them right on the counter where they can see them behind the glass. And people are always like, what are those? <laughs> and, but you'd be surprised how many p- people are familiar with cracklings. And because they've eaten pork rinds as they kids. Pork rinds, yeah, that's, I was going to say that's, a, that's familiar at least. Yeah, so that's more familiar than it is eating the whole hog. Mm-hmm. So we get over all the concerns that is the whole hog really in there? And it's like, no, it's not. It's been clean before it ever gets here. But um, we explain all that, you know, and, but they really enjoy it. You know, pork has a lot of flavor mm-hmm. and not the beef does not, but pork is a very flavorful meat. Mm-hmm. And, and I truly believe that whole hog has more flavor than just the, the, than just the shoulder as long as you pick it right. And, and we, we both pull our pork and chop our pork. We do a mixture of the two. And it seems to go well and people seem to like it a lot. When they're having events going on, they come back for larger amounts of it. And that's how we can kind of tell what's going on when they're like, I need five pounds of 
of your chop, whole hog to go. So anytime you get pork from you now, it's from whole hog. It's not. It is. We don't, we, we buy, well, not anytime. Cause like if you get a pork steak, that's still the oh, shoulder. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. But what we sell over the counter is the shoulder and the whole hog. There is no, no pulled pork per se. That's just pork shoulder. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the, the whole hog. And those and, pork and steaks course, sell ribs. out pretty quick. Yes. And then we've got, you know, pork ribs have always been a, a major yeah, but that's, yeah. part of the Trinity. So this is interesting because I wanted to touch base to see how you're doing and you, you look fine. I'm assuming your family's fine. Are you, but it seems like bit in the business hasn't really, it's changed in that you've altered and pivoted and done these things, but it's been steady. You, you've, Here's the number one thing that's changed. The way I get to talk to you about barbecue is the same way I talk to our customers normally about barbecue. I don't have that to that level anymore because everybody's got, everybody has a face mask on mm -hmm. and it's very difficult to talk with that mask on. Oh yeah. I've recently seen some reporters on the news and I'm like, this is not working. <laughs> no. And you see most of them take the thing off. Yeah. Yeah. Or, I, I pull, can't pull it out of there. Exactly. I won't do that. And I, when the customers do they for some reason, customers want to pull the mask down to talk and we're like, please put your mask back up. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's the number one time we need it. If they're talking. That's, about that's the whole point. Yes. They're something. Keep everybody safe. Everybody mm -hmm. in the building on our property, I'm trying to keep everybody safe. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of people. So we try to get everybody to follow the precautions that we know about and how well they work. I don't know. I don't have anything to do with med medicine, mm -hmm. but I, I have nothing to lose by wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. Our customers have nothing to lose by wearing a mask and we don't have any better option right now. So somebody so, that comes it's essentially the only option we have at the moment until five years from now, they've told us that we've been doing something wrong or who knows what. Right. Yeah. Right now we don't know. We have to go on what we know. So can people buy gift cards too online? You know, we always say we're going to do gift cards. Cause I don't we think I thought of whatever. We have them printed because the holidays people always want them and so on. You know, I'm a tough one to do restaurant stuff. I still believe that this is a barbecue shack. I st it's still a hobby to me. I still want to keep it as basic and simple and old fashioned as possible. And so I don't have gift cards yet. We don't have a fountain machine. There's just certain things that I just don't give into that I, I'd rather figure out how to make that pig taste better and how to have a new idea for sausage and, and things that I know people will enjoy. Mm -hmm. and That's great to hear. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, you know, I try to keep it as basic as I, plus I have a lot on my plate and I don't want a big staff. I don't want to do a bunch of behind the scenes stuff that's just not, you know, with the virus, we'll, we'll probably never go back to cash. We'll stay credit cards only. And so many businesses have gone that way, not necessarily because of the virus, but that's just the way of the world today. Yeah, how things have changed, yeah. Yeah, and so that's probably the only thing that's not basic anymore is cash, but it's filthy. Yeah, if you really, if you really think about it, yes. You have to worry about people breaking in, all kinds of things. That's so true. getting that out of here, I, I was kind of glad about that. And it takes that step away. You don't have to bring like a little deposit bag to the. I don't bank. do any of that. <laughs> no counting. There's no. You can't be off. You don't have to worry about the cash register not working. Okay, because they're all electronic these days. So if something's wrong with your POS system, you can't get the drawer to open. Just little stuff, mm -hmm. you know. And again, I'm all about simple. I try to make the food really great, but I try to do it simply. And our, our food line, the same thing. I don't have a whole bunch of online electronic, do this, do that. I, our customers seem to enjoy face-to-face, -face, mm -hmm. that old-fashioned butcher style. Let me see it. Let me talk to you. Let me taste it if, if we're allowed to. And buy as much as you want to buy. Do you think any of it has to do with Dallas and the old barbecue joints? And how they like that, how they, that's like maybe a familiarity and something that they still cherish. Or, I don't know. I'm just trying to I don't know because Dallas is such a, a place of immigrants and people have moved from 
states all over this country and of course outside of the country, but very few people, I mean, I know a lot of people from Dallas, but it's a small percentage, not a large percentage. There you and go. That is probably not that, yeah. here. It was the same way when I first came to Dallas in the seventies, everybody I met was from another state. Very rarely would I meet somebody from Dallas. They would be the exception to the rule. Maybe oh. one out of 10 people were from Dallas. So I think that does barbecue well because people are used to barbecue from all over the country mm -hmm. and they're not used to a certain way here. When I came here, there were some really good uh, older places. A couple of them are still around. Most of them are gone. And uh, yeah, I miss eating at them. You know, you sit at the little desk and, and yeah, that's what I'm thinking about. <laughs> and it was pretty much chopped brisket. It mm -hmm. wasn't even sliced brisket. True. Right? Yeah. And, but the sandwiches were great. You know, now the only thing we had to compare that to was like, like in my case, what I grew up with in St. Louis, I hadn't eaten barbecue other places. There wasn't anything to really compare it to. As I started getting more familiar with Texas and going to Lockhart places like that, uh, you saw a little bit more, you saw what sliced brisket was and, and other parts of it. And, and ribs, I always knew, you know, I, I can remember churches cooking ribs. Oh yeah. Out front the church where the women were raising money and things of that sort. And then Aaron Franklin <laughs> took this whole thing to another level and Daniel Vaughn started talking about it. Mm -hmm. and between those two barbecue in, in, in my book took on something that meant something to a big part of not just Texans, but people all over the country. Oh, without a doubt. And across, and across the world. It's, yep. it's it's amazing what what those two men have done for central texas style barbecue and and, cra and what they call craft barbecue and yeah it's a have you seen daniel at all i haven't seen daniel in gosh it's been maybe nine months maybe longer i haven't right. seen him in a long long time you know he went on a vacation and they got caught with the virus oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. and of course uh, he's from what i know he's very protective of himself and his family mm -hmm. not going places and uh, he's had he's he's posted a few places he's gone where they do the load in the car type stuff or take mm -hmm. out where he doesn't have to go in and uh, but no we we haven't seen him i've talked to him on the phone um maybe once or twice yeah. and but no they, they've done great stuff and and you know, and, and there's a lot of others that have too, and families and, and generations and so on. And, yeah. and the more you're in this, the more you learn about all those, you know, like the blacks generate different generations of the black families and Terry blacks is now here. And yeah. Now. And how they've spread out and done yeah, different yeah. things. It's yeah. cool to watch it all, you know, but, but the old fashioned, uh, really neat stuff, you know, everybody does try to keep up with the Joneses. So they're, they're in restaurants and they have, Right now, everybody's got online ordering and d different types of you can call in this and different systems and, and so on. And you got to do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I've noticed there's places that small, small places that are on Instagram that I never would have thought would have even had a computer that they're, and it, right. it seems like, a, but it, you know, you eventually have to show that you still exist and that you are still around. And it's, it's, you, you have to sort of keep up with things. But I like how you've, the, the simplicity and the things that you've, that you, that the way that you're treating your restaurant, even though of the accolades, even though the lines, even though sure. the, it's still, you, you still want to keep it simple, which that's nice to hear. And, I, and, and again, I'm not a chef either. So I don't do restaurant type stuff. I don't try to come up with fancy dishes. Now I try to figure out how to make barbecue better. Probably the fanciest thing we make is pastrami but it's still with a brisket or a beef cheek or something of that sort. It's not anything elaborate. I mean, there's, there's some folks that are just really great at that and they're chefs and so on, but that's not my thing. And mine is ribs and brisket and sausage and, and good old fashioned barbecue. And I try to do it with really good smokers, really good people, really good uh, choice of meats, Somebody like uh, Evan Leroy, I mean, that's just, yeah, um, yeah. 
<laughs> it's an idol to me, you know. He's, I just look up to him as, as the skills that he has and the, the dishes he comes up with, but that's not me. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I, and I don't want to. I don't want that kind of sophistication. And his stuff is great, and he's got a niche for that. Man. I love that that niche exists, too. That's amazing. Absolutely. It's so good. We were, we were there right before the virus at his place, and I, I, every bite I took of everything I had there, I was like in awe of it's a different level. It's, it's, it is barbecue, but it's done in such a different fashion that, and it's something that, that everybody has to try. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just, it's easy now to go get great brisket and it's easy now to go get great ribs, but to go get a dish that's unique, just like you would at any other restaurant. You go to certain restaurants because it's not that their Italian food's good, but they make a some kind of pasta dish that mm -hmm. nobody else has that you really look forward to, or even a, a, a homemade ice cream that's just outstanding. So, oh yeah, definitely. What time are people, just so people can, can get in their minds, are they, what time are people lining up generally? What are you seeing? I would say, they start gathering here on a typical Thursday or Friday in the 930 uh, range. The, the pre-orders are at 945. So those people are, are usually here first, but yet I'll have more people in the other line before the pre-order sometimes at 930, 945. Okay. And it just, it, a lot of it depends on the weather too. If it's hot out here, they're going to wait till the last minute or they're going to clean their cars until they see other people getting out. True. Um, we try to almost always open the door as quick as we can. So if the pre-orders are done by 10, many times I'll open the door at 10 instead of 1030. Mm -hmm. There's people out there. It's like they're ready to go. And I know right now most of them are getting it to go. So they don't mind getting it early. Mm -hmm. Now when people are dining in. They don't necessarily want to start sitting down and eating at 10 o'clock when they knew they were probably going to eat at 1030, 11. So yeah, exactly. That's a different time, but we're not in that time yet. We're just barely having people sit down. They sit down uh, at these tables, but there's only a couple at each table. Most of them are taking it. Probably 60% are, are, are out the door. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. So, so if someone shows up at the 930, like 915, 930 range, that's a safe time. And are, they, are people showing up? like 11 or 12 and still getting food like that's still oh absolutely absolutely yeah. probably one o'clock is the most perfect time to come because we still have most everything left we could be out of something like beef ribs just yeah. depending on the day but most everything is still left and there's no line okay so one o'clock oh, that's a great there that's, is, there's is. the tip at the very end of this interview the, the, the scoop yeah. <laughs> and we put that even in we put out a weekly email of what's going on Mm -hmm. and we again we I get that I get that weekly email. with email you know and, and Misty still has people handwrite their email address she's not right now because of the pen situation of who can touch a pen and the clipboard and all this stuff oh that's true and so they go online and sign into the email and on, on the website you can sign up for the email list and we put in there the same thing the, the ideal time to get here is one o'clock now some people are just adamant about I've got to have burn ends and I've got to have beef ribs and so on. And they want everything. And so they'll come earlier for that. But the line's never that long. It's, it's really not right now. People may wait 30 minutes, but they're not waiting long. Saturday was a different story. And last week was a different story well, because, because of the holiday. holiday yeah. We had the same thing on Father's Day, same thing on Mother's Day. And we won't have that again, I guess, till Labor Day on a normal Thursday, Friday, or Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I don't know a normal Saturday because we haven't gone through that yet, other than the one on the holiday. Gotcha. Normal Thursday and Friday, waiting's not a big deal. There's no reason to get here before 9.30. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, some people do because they want to be first in line. We do have tents up out there, the awnings, so they can sit under. They're not in the sun until that line starts growing, and, and that rarely happens. So it's all good. So where do you go? Are you going to take, are you taking off this week to just recoup? Or are you going somewhere? No, no, I'm here on vacation. This is a staycation or whatever they call it. <laughs> and, you know, I came up today. Uh, I have to meet a contractor and, but mostly uh, Misty and I are hanging at the house cool. uh, using the pool. We 
we have a little bit. Um, I'm getting some work done there. I'm reading some books. I'm doing some things I want to do. Even when I take a vacation, I don't have any time typically because we're going and going and going. Yeah. And she loves vacations with activity. So this is the first time, and I can't tell you how many years, I kind of have a week to kind of do what Todd wants. Nice. Right, cool. That's important. That You need that. In, it's, it's good for your soul. It's important. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I get, I get plenty of it, but this is just I don't have to worry about what time to get up. I play with the dogs. I have breakfast at home. It's all, it's all like, you know, a bunch of Saturdays or a bunch of Sundays in a row. It's kind of cool. <laughs> well, thank you for taking the time on your vacation. Oh, your, this is your first day of your vacation. I can't wait to visit you once this fog lifts. But we'll be here. Hey, thank you again, and thank you, you again. Stay safe. You stay safe, too. Say hi to Misty, and uh, keep, keep doing what you're doing. It's important. Thank you. Thanks for what you do. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay. Bye.